it going everybody? Welcome back to Grim Acres. I'm CJ. And I'm Morgana. And on this particular segment, we're going to be making cheese. Not just any cheese, goat cheese. It's the best cheese. I mean, it's debatable, but it is very good. Let me rephrase. The best cheese that we can make in our kitchen. And today we're going to show you how to make it in yours. So, Ghana, take it away. <laughs> we also make regular cow cheese from regular milk and mozzarella. We'll get to that. From regular cows. From regular cows. But this today we're making fresh goat cheese, or as the French call it, what is it, chevre? Yep. Chevre. I... Which is just French for fresh goat cheese. Yes. So you can call it something fancy if you wish. Yes. All right, we'll go through our supplies, which is... A cheese pot. <laughs> Some spatulas. This one has a thermometer in it, because mm -hmm. you're going to need to know the temperature. Uh, we're going to take it up to 180, which is almost boiling, but not quite, mm -hmm. or is... Should boil. I think <laughs> boiling is actually, what is it, 200 and some? Something. It gets frothy. Right. We have some frothy. lemon juice, white vinegar. We've got our half gallon of organic goat milk. Uh, this is ultra pasteurized. In the grocery store, I don't think you can get raw because I don't think it's legal. I don't, I don't know, is it? I don't know. We'll have to check the legalities on that. Yeah. Oh, and one other thing that she especially wanted to bring up. Tell us when it expired. Okay, so it's the end of January 2022. Mm -hmm. This expired September 29th of last year. Mm -hmm. So it's a few months old. Mm -hmm. As long as you don't open that seal, it stays good for a very long time. That's the best buy date. Um, we've used milk older than that before, and it's fine. Mm -hmm. Just make sure it is airtight. Yeah. Uh, you can also freeze milk. That works fine. Just make sure it defrosts slowly in the fridge. And then especially with goat milk, because it's it's super full fat, make sure you shake it really good. Otherwise, you're going to have a lot of fat left behind that you want to make the cheese. So shake it really good. You're not going to do that. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Marry me. <laughs> Goes both ways, huh? <laughs> and then we have... A cheesecloth. You can use the regular sheets of cheesecloth. I don't like them because they shed strings. And Everywhere. Um, and if you try washing them in the washer, guess what happens? You're left with a pile of string. Yeah, don't don't wash those. Unless you've figured out the secret, in which case, leave us a comment below. This is actually a pool sock. Yeah. They're one of my favorite things. It's a microfiber. Um, they wash really well. They fit over a strainer. We'll get a link to those. You can get them on Amazon. Yeah. Um, but you essentially need something about 100 microns. Uh, a coffee filter is, I believe, one micron, maybe two, uh, to give you an idea. Uh, most thick microfiber is around what you're looking for. So we'll go over that later when we get to the straining process. And then we have... Our strainer and a colander because we're going to put that over that onto that into this and we're going to pour what we make into there and then we're going to let it set up basically it's just a multi-stage filter we're straining out the way because we want the solids left behind yeah then after we get all that combined we're going to put the herbs that we want in it for flavoring you can make this a savory cheese uh, we like the Italian herbs and garlic, it's so or tasty. fresh chives, or fresh wild garlic when we have it. It's so tasty. It's very tasty. You can Especially when you put it on like crackers. Call yourself. I'm not. <laughs> you can make it sweet too with your local honey, uh, berries, or just make it plain because then you can top it with whatever you want. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get started with, with the milk in the pot. Yeah. And we already checked it and everything, and it's September, October, November, December, January. Four months old, basically. And it's perfectly fine. Because it was left completely sealed. Yep. Because it's expensive, so we get it when it's on sale, and then I make a batch when we're ready for it. So we always kind of have it on hand. Make sure you get all of... The fat. fat out of it. The fat's the good part. 
more cold the milk, the more cream is stuck in there. All milk is not created equal. Skim milk is garbage. Oh, That's yeah. what you use to fatten pigs. I don't know why they even sell it. There's nothing good in it and it's full of sugar because all the stuff they took out. Mm-hmm. They had to replace it with something. Yep. So <laughs> nonetheless, we're going to be bringing this up to temperature slowly while gently stirring it. And we're going to go up to 180. So we'll get that on the stove and then we'll be back to combined and do the chemistry. Yep, and if you notice, we're actually still working on our video for the yogurt behind us right now. So, it's kind of the same process to begin with, but then it diverges. It's very similar and it's dairy day. So, it's easier just to do all the dairy at one time because some take two days to process, some are done right away. My head and my heart love this day. My stomach does not. <laughs> so, here we go. Get to it. Yeah. Okay, I'm taking it. Go make it go. I'm gonna make it go. All right, we'll be back. Okay, so we've got our pool filter on here, and I actually doubled it up, and I moved it to a smaller sieve, because I think I was stretching it too much. Yeah, uh, what you guys didn't see was that we had a little bit of a technical difficulty with the uh, original try of dumping this, so we're going to go for it again. Ready? Oh yeah, that's definitely better. That's much better. Whew. Almost put a hex on the whole damn thing. Would you grab the colander from the other side? Mm -hmm. Oh, I see where you're going with this. Bowl. Lift a little higher. There we go. what it's supposed to look like. Mm -hmm. And later I'll try and get a picture of this, but that's all way down there right now, right? Yes. Okay. Because that's got a little bit of milk fat in it. Because it's got a little bit of white to it. Yep. It so is dripping just right. So we'll get this whole thing poured in there. Which we're getting there. I probably should have gone with the, the medium sieve that I have instead of the large. The large stretched the fabric too much. This one's working fine. Perfectly. Um, Wait, you know what? Scraper. Oh, um. So. I'm scraping it off of the fabric. So hopefully it will strain a little bit quicker right now. Because we've still got just a little bit down at the bottom of this bowl. So what I like to do is actually tie a knot in it and hang it on my faucet. Once it gets mostly, con yeah. mostly condensed in here. So like it's already starting to come together. Can I pour the rest of this in there now? Yeah, will that fit? Yeah, sure. I'll do it slowly, just in case. Oh, yeah, that's good. All right. So, we're gonna let this sit a little bit longer until more of the whey comes out so it's a little bit more manageable in here. Uh, a gallon of milk usually will yield roughly a pound of cheese, depending on how dry you like it. I like ours fairly dry. Um, it's recommended to let it sit for at least an hour and drain. I will generally let it sit oh, much longer yeah. than that. Um, it's a nice healthy goat cheese. Yeah. So we will cut back and show you what the next step is once this is a little bit ready. So just put a cover on it. You don't have to put it in the fridge. Let it do its thing. Just occasionally check on it. 
and make sure oh, you're God. getting all that great goat fat there. That's going to be awesome. All right. See you in a few. All right. So we are still in the process of making cheese right now. And we've officially started sorting the uh, whey from the curds. Something that um, we are trying to get into the habit of doing is not necessarily getting rid of the whey. So one thing that we do with the whey is we will make oatmeal for the chickens. These are the most spoiled brats in the entire world. Hey guys. Don't want to put it on your faces. Calm down. Blue would like it on her face. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> Um, run, Delta, run! As you can see, it's a treat for everybody. <laughs> and it's really starting to get colder out here. <laughs> so a nice, warm cup of oatmeal does everybody a little bit of good. Isn't that right, guys? Oh, oh let's mop. And mom's tossing in some crushed up eggshells. There you go, guys. A little bit of calcium, a little bit of protein. What do you think, Charlie? Girls, let Charlie have some. Is it good? It's good, isn't it? I thought you had some on your face. Your head. <laughs> you, Delta. <laughs> I love the matching sound. Is it good, Delta? <laughs> Charlie is no, no longer entertained by this. He always lets the girl be first. And they're a mess. They like it that way. So, I think this is a pretty good place to end the side quest of the cheese. So Making some whey oatmeal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what to do with the whey. It's full of protein. Alright. I'm getting cold, so I'm going to go in. <laughs> Okay, so it's been a few hours while we've waited for our cheese to finish draining. I want cheese. <laughs> it's almost time. Good. Okay. All right. So what we've done is, as you saw in the video, we used our extra whey. Uh, we warmed that up and made oatmeal for the kids, or chickens. Mm -hmm. um, and whey has a lot of good protein in it, so it's a shame to waste it. It's no way! Wait until you see what I'm going to do in post. Okay. It's going to be funny. Oh dear. So we're going to save the whey and keep making them some warm oatmeal for their bellies when it's cold out. And then, couldn't get to the lid right now, so we've actually got one of our homemade beeswax covers, which will be another video. We should be getting bees this year! I'm so excited! <laughs> Yay! Bees! They're an important part of our ecosystem, but I'm still terrified of them. I don't know why. I think it was because I was stung as a child. Wasps. Wasps are scary. Wasps are... Like no, I do not. So... I can untie it as I burned my thumb in the studio earlier. <laughs> so oh. that's how I hang it. In our pool sock. And now we're just going to add some spices. All right, let's see how it turned out. And plop. That'll do. That'll do nicely. All right. So. Now it's currently kind of got the consistency of cream cheese. Which will be another video. Yes. If you want um. to learn how to make that. <laughs> and that will go in the laundry, as it is reusable. It is. So, I'll go show the people at home. <clears throat> Behold! Our cheats. There we go. So you can put whatever spices you want in here. So we've got a little bit of oregano. You are a ham. Yes, I am. <laughs> you married me. This is where the cat gets it from. Excuse me? I am not that bad. Basil. Basil. Or, if you're English, basil. 
That was salt, because she's salty. Don't use iodized salt in your cooking. Canning and stuff, it can change the colors of... Just, just use, use sea salt. We've got white pepper. It's gonna be interesting. And garlic. Mm. All right. Never too much garlic. Give that a good old stir. All right. And then once you've added whatever seasonings you want, that's when you can shape it. Um, sometimes I'll throw it back in to the little pool sock, the filter, so it gets that ball shape and it continues to harden up a little bit more. But I think what we're going to do is we're just going to put it in one of our little dishes and use it more like a, a cracker dip or something. A spread. A spread. Okay. I want to be. I want to be thorough. Okay. I thought you just want to get to the tasting. Side. I. This is a very serious science. It's cheese. Yes, I'm gonna. <laughs> All right. So yeah, it's the consistency of cream cheese. You can definitely let it sit overnight in the strainer pool sock, your cheesecloth, whatever you used, and it'll continue to harden up even more to the part where it like crumbles apart. So it's really just your preference, what you're looking for at the time. Um, I actually like it, like ball consistency. Ball consistency or shape? Ball consistency. So it'll hold up on its own. Yeah. Roll it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, trying not to waste any of this here. I'm sure between you and the cat that can get cleaned out. She can f*** right off. <laughs> Uma, did you hear that? Yeah, I hope she... Uma, f*** off. No, nope, she's going to turn her back to you. Psh. She's going to look... She's giving me that Sam Jackson look. All right. And I got a lot on my thumb. Oh my god, it's so good already. That is good. Yep. And then you just wait until all of the flavors really start to mingle, all the salt, pepper, garlic, so on and so forth, you know. There's no aging because this is considered a fresh cheese. Yeah. So let it mingle overnight, um, even three days or so. Yeah. And Give it time. It'll last in the fridge for, well, we don't know because it doesn't last in the fridge. Actually, yeah, it's <laughs> I tend to get into it, and then it's just, I don't know where it goes. It should last for a fair amount of time, but we'll do mm. a video more on cheeses and how to preserve cheeses, where sometimes you might want to save the whey, depending on what you're working on, because sometimes you have to store the cheese in the whey, and that's what keeps it from going bad in your fridge. Kind of like a mozzarella, right? Yeah, so when you get mozzarella, sometimes that's oil. I'm something okay. So we'll talk about different preservations. I enjoy food preservation techniques. We'll also be doing building a smoker, smokehouse, tiny smokehouse. Uh, we wanna try that salt curing. Yeah. And I don't know how to make prosciutto, but I'm gonna find out. <laughs> All coming up on a new season of Grim Acres. So on that note, Thanks again for joining us, and we hope that your cheese turns out as good as ours does. And until we see you next time, do, do what, what makes, makes you happy. happy.